Hello, and welcome to the Echo World Channel. We are the alternative voice in the South. We're dedicated to bringing out opinions, views, personalities, insights, and tools that people can use in their daily lives that they don't usually get in the mainstream media. I'm the co-publisher, Michael Peter Langevin, and today I have with me a good friend and a good writer, maybe even a great writer, Frank DeMarco. Frank, welcome. Thank you, Michael. Always glad to do it. Frank, we're here to talk about inner guidance. What is inner guidance? You know, our society sometimes tends to think that uh, the only thing that counts is thoughts and is conscious effort. But actually, I think the largest part of what we are and how we function is really intuitive. And um, people do that automatically without really knowing it. I've just been practicing over the past few years, finding ways to do it more uh, deliberately, a little more consciously. You call it L, L you call it ILC. What's I, what is ILC about? Um, the guys that I talked to on the other side of the veil, that I call the guys upstairs, suggested that a long time ago, maybe 20 years ago, ILC stands for Intuitive Linked Communication. And the reason they called it that rather than channeling or any of the other words that, that have been used is they said that the process of us in the body talking to uh, spirits or talking to intelligences that are not in the body is the very same process we use when we're talking like you and I are talking right now. Same process. It's just that there's a different person on the other end of the line. So, so the intuitive means, okay, it's not thought out ahead of time. Linked means it's a temporary joint mind, and communication is communication, okay? So you speak to the guys upstairs. Is, it, is that what everybody gets when they go into inner guidance or, or look for inner guidance? Um, the answer, as their answer to me so often is yes, but no. Uh, everybody has people that they resonate with on the other side whether they have personalized them or not, that doesn't mean they're the same ones. You know, uh, the people who are closest to you, you and I may even have overlap. We may have some of the same um, um, advisors, let's put it that way. This would explain a lot of the bad advice I sometimes get. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the chances are your life has a different center of, of interest than mine does. And so the, the people you connect with on the other side are going to be somewhat different the same way. And it'll be true of everybody. You use the word people on the other side. Is it people? Well, I don't know. You know that you could call them practically anything. Uh, I sometimes call them ex-humans because many of them have been human and they're, they're on the other side now. They haven't all been human. Uh, I don't know why not to call them people. I mean, they're, they, you know, the problem with words like spirits uh, or spirit guides or any of those things is that there's been so much meaning sort of accreted onto them over the years, and it can be misleading. So I, I like to keep it simpler. They've said many times, the main difference between us and them is not any na difference in nature, it's the turf war on. We're here in the 3D, they're not constrained by the 3D. It makes things different, okay? How did you learn how to do this, Frank? You know, that's an interesting question. I, I had, sends me back. Um, when I was a boy, or a young man anyway, my brother gave me a book on Edgar Cayce. And I thought, boy, Edgar Cayce, that's phenomenal. Wouldn't it be great to have a gift like that, you know, one in a million? Well, it's true. He was one in a million, just as Jane Roberts is with Seth. But it's also true that what they did is a, it's a, it's a fundamental human ability. And it's the kind of human ability that can be um, nurtured if you pay attention to it. So I paid attention to it. I mean, my, my analogy always is, anybody can learn to play the piano if they put enough effort into it. They're not gonna be Paderewski unless they happen to be Paderewski, but they're at least gonna be able to do chopsticks. Well, it's the same thing with talking to the guys upstairs or talking to, doing anything in your life. Practice, practice, practice. So I didn't know how to do it. I was, I'm, if, if there was a mistake in how to do it that I didn't do, it was only by accident <laughs> because <laughs> everything, I never knew what I was doing. But but the nice thing about that is you're also being intuitively guided, you know, prodded, pushed. 
you get these little things that happen to you and you follow them and they open up things. So more than anything else, it was my time at the Monroe Institute. Uh, I did my first program there in 92, which is more than a couple of weeks ago. And that began to open up things, you know. In my experience since, the largest obstacle to people communicating with the guys upstairs or with the other side, however you want to look at it, is that they either know for sure that they can't do it or they can't imagine that they can do it and they're intimidated by it, you know. So you go, well, I'm probably just making this up. And whenever I hear somebody say that, I think, okay, that was something real that just happened to them because otherwise they would, they would be saying, well, I know why that happened. You know, it's a long answer. I hope that answers no, your question. No, it's a great answer. But how, how do you advise people to get started doing it? Michael, it's so simple that it's difficult for them to actually hear that I've said something. I, I tell people often it's, it's easier done than said. You go into, and you know this by your own example, but by your own experience, but you sit down. It helps if you have a question or if you have a focus, you know, something you want to talk about or even someone you want to talk to. Supposing you want to talk to your dead father, you know, just, just uh, think of that. Then it's a curious thing. You, you get into a, a combination of being in an alert state but then also in a very receptive state, okay? You're not driving the process, but you're showing up, all right? You're showing up and you're willing. Now, our minds, I won't go into why, but our minds actually function in the non-3D. They don't follow 3D rules. Uh, it's, it's easily, you can see it easily when you think about it. In your mind, you can go back to last Tuesday or you can go to next Tuesday. Try doing that in your body. You can't do it. You have to wait for it to roll around and if it's already gone, it's gone. Those are physical 3D rules, and that's what our bodies follow. But our minds, not our brains, but our minds, which function in our body through the brains, follow non-physical rules. Therefore, they do things like they have premonitions. They experience telepathy. They can go back even memories, fantasies, fantasies ahead of time, you know, all of that. So this can, doesn't always come in like you feel it from a discounted voice. It comes in in other ways as well. More often, it feels like you're making it up because when you're in connection with another mind, even you and I right now, although it's not obvious, but when you're doing that, you're in, a, in the equivalent of a temporary joint mind. It isn't that you know everything I know and every, I know scary, everything. scary, Frank. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry, you know, I couldn't resist. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> but... You know, actually, come to think of it, that's not a bad point. Uh, I know that was a joke, but it can be scary for people. But it also can be, um, it can, it can um, fool them. Because if you're in communication with a non-3D mind, there's no physical sensory evidence of it, of course. So it's easy to assume, I'm just making this up. Even though you don't have any clue why you would be making it up or where it's coming from. But, you know, you have those things in life anyway. Well, if they once realize they're not making it up, but they are afraid, then it can be, oh my God, spirits are putting thoughts into my head. I'm being psychically attacked. There, there are lots of, of uh, potential. what do you do then? All I tell people is don't live in fear, but, but you know, that's easy said. And if they're in fear, how do you persuade somebody there isn't really anything to fear, you know? I have told people, if you think about doing this and you get afraid of the whole concept, probably you shouldn't do it because there's something inside of you that's warning you, this is not your path. But on the other hand, you know, lots of times you do things in life and you're afraid of them. And then having done them, you realize there was nothing to be afraid of. That was, that was just nervousness, you know. But, but those who start the process and feel like they've connected with a negative force, can they disconnect? Sure, you can, can, it's easy, it's very easy to disconnect. That's, a, that's actually a much more complicated question than you think, because my question immediately goes to, all right, why were they able to connect with that negative force, you see? My theory, my working theory is, here we are, and here's whatever we're connecting with, there has to be a resonance. So while the resonance is there, yes, it's an easy connection break the resonance, the connection breaks. On a mundane level, 
supposing you're an auto mechanic. While you're thinking about auto mechanics, you could connect with Bob and Ray or Tom and Ray, where they were, you know, the, the car dog guys. I'm, I'm sort of serious there, okay? While there's a task to be accomplished, you can, you can resonate with them. Or in my case, I've often had conversations with Hemingway. Now, I can't swear that that was Hemingway as anybody else would ever experience him. My suspicion is it's several aspects of Hemingway that I happen to overlap with. Okay, but you know, I don't really deal with the soldier or the hunter or even the fisherman, really, because I'm none of those things. But the writer aspect and other things, you know, and plus he was quite a mystic, although people don't realize it. If people are connecting with negative energies, my question really would be why? You see, I wouldn't look at it as, well, this just happened and I happen to be a victim. I would look at it as, where are you? that you're in resonance with that negative energy. However, most people don't necessarily buy that, you know. Many people prefer to think of themselves as victims. This brings me back to a question I wanted to uh, ask a little earlier. You use something called the what if tool. Oh yes, okay, it took me a minute to figure out what you're talking about. Yes, I, um, when somebody says, I'm probably just making this up, I say, well, so let's suppose you are making it up, why are you making this up rather than something else? In other words, the, the making it up itself, even if you're doing it, is, is meaningful. Now, is, that doesn't, that's not quite what if, but is that what you were referring to? Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Is what if it was real? Um, I think is what you said to me at one point in time. Now, I think you touched on this earlier, but how do you tell people to get out of their way and not judge? It's a small readjustment and it's so small, it's so easy, but it's more than some people seem to be able to do. And that is just don't judge. Take it and hold it in suspension. I mean, I mean, it isn't like there's an elaborate process for learning how not to judge things, but it's a choice. It's not a process, it's not a skill, it's a choice. And you say, I don't know whether or not this is true. I don't know how much of it is true, anything like that, but I'm willing to go with it for the moment. Now. The guys told me years ago, one of the reasons why I qualified to do this is because I'm very comfortable with things being in suspension, with things not being resolved, you know, just, just having it open-ended. If you're not comfortable with that, if you have to have things black and white, it may still work, but you, chances are the answers you're going to get are going to be black and white, and you're going to think that's the absolute way it really is, whereas I would say, well, that's that way because that's what you can relate to you say what that brings us to the question of what a bad habit if someone actually starts doing this and and things are getting pretty good at it what are some bad habits that they have to look out for well one bad habit would be to get egotistical about it to think uh you know this is because i'm so great you don't know what has what gifts have been given to you and what responsibilities come with them and you don't know what you should be doing with it. Maybe you're doing well, maybe you aren't. It isn't a matter of ego, good or bad. A lot of people have an ego that's too small. And they say, well, I'm just nobody. I can't do this. Other people go, I can do this. I'm phenomenal. Both of the, you know, that's keeping score. And keeping score doesn't really make any sense to me. Uh, another pitfall is my judging your performance. You know, and I say, well, you know, Michael's off the beam. Have you ever noticed, what a coincidence, have you ever noticed now, when other people are off the beam, it's always as they're different from where you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how that works, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, if they agree with me, they sell them off the, uh, off the beam. I don't know why that is. <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of rules. That's, that's almost enough. How, how, do you, how do you tell people, um, I mean, is this something they can just... I want to do this, I'm going to make it happen, or is there a different approach? Well, you could say the negative of that. If they say, I can't do it or don't want to do it, it won't happen. All right. Oh, well, even there, though, you have to stop because it may happen unconsciously, and they think that they're imagining things or fantasizing or whatever. But in general, I think if you have the, if you'll come to it with faith and confidence, then you'll see what you get. You know, if it isn't your path, there will be obstacles and you won't do it one for one reason or another. But if it is your path, you'll get all kinds of unsuspected assistance. 
the biggest thing is just stay out of the way. You know, I don't say I am the great I am. I'm going to do this. I just say, well, you know, let's see what happens. I'll, I'll try. If you have good intent, if you are, I don't want to say humble exactly, but you certainly don't want to be puffed up. If you just are natural and if you'd like to help, I don't think there's anything better than that. And, and it's not, it just doesn't require a lot of elaborate, you know, you don't have to stand on one foot. I got my turban off to clean it, so I can't do it. I need it. Um, now, you get up most mornings, pour yourself a cup of coffee, sit down, open up, and start writing for an hour of information you bring in, correct? More or less. Is that the way you advise other people to do it? I don't advise other people to do it. Other people will find their own way. I did it initially that way because as a lifelong asthmatic, I would often wake up in the middle of the night, unable to breathe properly, unable to go back to sleep. And I eventually learned that what I could do is talk to the, when I'm in communication with the other side, my breathing settles out. Now, partly it settles out just because you're sitting up instead of lying down. But it was only, it was primarily because it was physically convenient for me to do it that way. And not only convenient, it was actually helpful. That's, that's why it started. But somebody else might have an entirely different, you know, maybe three in the afternoon. I, I do think it's worthwhile to have a routine if you can get it, because you can lean on the routine. You know, you can, you can rely on it. Uh, it's not the same as being dependent on it. And if I don't do it today, I've missed my chance forever. But it is, well, it's, I don't know. It's just helpful. You, routines help anybody, I would think. But, but I could do this by just feeling like I'm going into to a deeper meditative state and talking, talk, having a conversation with an energy. Or I could do this by not even writing it down, just um, remembering it afterwards. Uh, yes, but no. I, <laughs> yes, you probably could. I don't advise doing it without either writing it down or recording it. Because while you're doing it, it's going to seem to you like it's just you talking to yourself often, not always. If you've written it down or if you have tape recorded and you can listen to it later, then a couple of days later when you're not in that same paired space, now you're looking at it and you're hearing the stuff that you don't expect. And you're saying, where did that come from? You, you know, when it flows through, if it's flowing through really well, you're going, yeah, yeah, well, you know, I understand this. This is perfect. I, you know, no problem. A couple of days later, you look at it and go, wow, you know, there was some really good stuff in there. So, so, let's so the go back to the, okay, finish. I'm sorry. No, that's all. The recording is important, I think. Let's go back to the beginning. I'm someone who's hearing this for the first time on YouTube, and I and I say, yeah, I want to try that. I say, okay, I'm going to make time this afternoon. I'm going to sit down by myself. I'm going to have a tape recorder on, and then what do I do? Then you get in a focused and in a an, um, receptive state at the same time. If you knew if you knew Monroe, you would say focus ten. Okay, so you're you're in a calm state. You're not your emotions are sort of off to the side. You're just you're just there and you're aware. If you have a question, it's helpful. And the better the question, the better the answer you're liable to get. If you don't have a question, if you have someone you want to talk to, keep them in mind. Keep them in mind, not intellectually, but through heart space. Okay, you want to talk to your dead father. Don't think about your father as he used to do X and such, which was a funny habit. Well, it could be that. But think of him in some way that connects you to him emotionally, or, or rather, uh, well, again, heart space. That is way realer than our thoughts. Though, Therefore, our society tells you only to pay attention to the thoughts, right? But, but see, that, I mean, that's so simple. It's difficult for people to hear it and realize because they think if it were really that simple, everybody would do it. Well, it really is that simple, and everybody doesn't do it. Okay, Frank, we've covered most of the bases. Are there things that you should say or want to say about ILC and connecting with inner guidance I haven't asked, we haven't covered? Oh, probably, but I don't know what they would be. <laughs> I, I, just, I just can't help reinforce, if it's your path and you start on it, you don't have to do it right the first time, and maybe you won't. As I said, I made a tremendous amount of mistakes. Well, they looked like mistakes at the time. Let's put it that way. But your, 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 what some people call your higher self 
your non 3D component, the other part of yourself that, that knows your life better, will automatically give you the assistance you need. You just got to get out of its way. Now, Frank, you're on Facebook? I am. That's Frank Zamako? Uh, no, as of my own knowledge dot com of my own knowledge all one word that's your blog is that and website is that also your facebook sorry i'm also an idiot <laughs> <laughs> well that's true no. so we're doing good today we all went fast marco dot ten one zero okay okay Marco's they think I'm, i thought i was the first I'm back away from the computer i'm losing you here at the last part don't back away um so people can find you at at myownknowledge.com and on Facebook at Frank DeMarco. No. Let's of my own knowledge. Okay. Of my own knowledge.com and okay. Frank DeMarco.10. And do you want to give out your email? Sure. Um, muddy Tracks, all one word, Muddy Tracks, M U D D Y T R A C K S at earthlink.net. I'm going to spell Frank's name because I used to get it wrong all the time. It's Frank. That's pretty straightforward. D E capital M A R C O. Um, you can Except, find us. Say, you're you're right. They don't care about capitals, is all. Okay, <laughs> you can find his fourteen books now, Frank. Uh, I think so. On on Amazon, and uh, they're great reads. Actually, I'm going to go so far as to say Frank's one of my favorite authors. I, I've read most of what he's written, and his stuff really touches me personally on a very deep level and I, I strongly advise people to go onto Amazon and pick up one of his books. Um, the two that deal closest with inner, inner uh, guidance are um, the Spirit well, I think that's right. You're in the hologram first, yes. And then I think the Reader's World books are, are, um, are in it as well. Excellent. But thank you. That's, that's uh, appreciated. Frank, that, this has been wonderful as always. You're a pleasure to interview. Um, I'm Michael Peter Langerin talking from the Echo World, the alternative voice in the South. Uh, we have a channel on YouTube and soon to have channels other places. Keep looking for us and you can go to the echoworld.com to find out more information. Thank you very much and have a great.